The Droplet. A physicist called Dingy from one of the fleet ships called Quantum, who is also described as Einstein looking, insists upon being a member of the team which is gonna examine the probe at first hand. By now, a first picture of the probe that is now standing still has been made from a 500 km distance. He looks at the picture. The probe is 3.5 meters long and has the shape of a perfect teardrop. It perfectly reflects everything that shines on it. It looks beautiful, like a work of art. Symbolizing something very important for both species. Water. A beautiful gift to humanity to make up for peace and so the name for it went from probe to droplet. They plan the examine mission. A unmanned ship called Mantis equipped with a robot arm is gonna examine the droplet from a safe distance. If nothing happens, Dingy and his team are gonna board Mantis to actually examine it. Before he goes though, he suggests to his ship Quantum to go into deep sea state, just for good measure. Another ship called Bronze Age does the same. Make sure to remember the names of these two ships. Mantis begins to examine the droplet. The event is being live broadcasted to the over 3 billion people on Earth and to the 1.2 million people of the fleet. Everyone is watching. When the mechanical arm of Mantis finally touched the droplet, nothing happened. Mantis pulls the droplet into its cabin and waits for two hours to see if it self-destructs. Nothing happened. Humanity is now sure that the droplet is a peace gift from Trisolaris. Quantum launches the shuttle with the examination team, which are Dr. Dingy and three other people, so they can board Mantis to finally examine the droplet. We get some interesting dialogue during this. Dr. Ding Yi, who is over 80 years old, reminisces about the past. Someone he once loved. He never bothered her though. If I love you, what business is it of yours? He says. As a physicist, he also regrets the Sofon block. If we are exploring the laws, what business is it of the laws? He says. Make sure to remember these lines. They finally arrive at Mantis and begin to border it. The examination of the droplet can finally begin. They pull out a microscope first, but no matter how many times they increase its strength, the surface of the droplet always remains a smooth mirror. One even slams a tool on it. No difference. Still a smooth mirror. They also touch the droplet. Since its temperature is close to absolute zero, they had to do so with the gloves on. Still nothing happened. They come to the conclusion that the surface of the droplet is 100 times greater than the sturdiest material in the solar system. All known substances were as fragile as paper by comparison. It could pass through the earth like a bullet through cheese. Then what's it here for? One asks. Who knows? Maybe it's just a messenger. But it's here to give humanity a different message, Dingy answers. What message? If I destroy you, what business is it of yours? Silence. Run, Dingy says. Stupid children, run, he repeats. The rest of the team finally understands. The fleet, evacuate the fleet, someone else screams. But it's too late. Due to strong interference, the broadcast signal is cut off and then it happened. A blue halo emerged from the tip of the droplet, turning yellow, then red, before it vanished. Then a second time, and a few more times after that. But the team never saw the second halo emerge. They were completely vaporized by the first one due to high temperature close to the sun's core. After that, the droplet began to accelerate. Mantis began to melt and then finally exploded. The fleet saw all of this from a thousand kilometer distance. They think the droplet self-destructed and felt sorrow for the team. The alarm system of the fleet couldn't realize that the droplet was still intact and not destroyed in the explosion, now moving at 30 kilometers per second directly towards the fleet. They had no idea what was about to happen. The first ship that was directly struck by the droplet was Infinite Frontier. Then it passed through Yuan Fong, Foghorn, Antarctica, and Ultima, causing every ship it passed through to explode. Then it began to systematically pass through every formation of spaceship it encountered, ship after ship, row after row. It all happened so fast that nobody knew what was going on. First, they come to the conclusion that the ships are attacking each other, not knowing that it's the droplet. The fleet command is in complete shock. 
The droplet moved like a bullet fired by a gun that moved like it had its own mind. Their defense system proved to be completely useless against this invisible enemy. Some even think that this is the power of another unknown species that they haven't encountered yet, because in their minds humanity had already won the war against Trisolaris. By now, all the fleet ships have started up their engines, but it was just too late. And so, the slaughter continued. 13 minutes passed until they actually figured out what was going on. They finally discovered the droplet, but by then, 600 of their 2000 ships had already been destroyed. Humanity has made plans for every possible outcome of a battle against Trisolaris, but they always thought that the size of the enemy was big. But now the combined fleet had to face facts. The only enemy was a tiny probe. One drop of water out of the enormous ocean of Trisolaran strength. And this probe attacked using one of the oldest and primitive tactics known to human navies. Ramming. The ships of the fleet, now knowing what was going on, finally began to attack the droplet. First with the laser beams that were invisible to the naked eye. Then with the machine guns that could flatten a mountain. I guess it won't surprise you that these attacks had zero effect. The droplet now doubled its speed to 60 km per second and just continued like nothing happened and caught up to every ship trying to escape. However, there were two ships that actually managed to escape, Quantum and Bronze Age. They entered deep sea state before the incident even happened because Dingy recommended it before he went to examine the droplet, thus giving them just enough time to escape. I've explained two timestamps earlier what the deep sea state is by the way. By now, more than 1000 ships, more than half of the fleet had been destroyed within 20 minutes. The battlefield turned into a complete inferno. Debris stretching over 10,000s of kilometers. The droplet increased its speed even more, now going at 170 kilometers per second to continue the massacre. The last ship destroyed by the droplet was Ark. After that, the droplet turned into the direction in which Quantum and Bronze Age fled, but quickly abandoned its chase since they were already too far away, making them the only survivors of the battle. Besides around 60,000 people that managed to flee by boarding much smaller ships from their motherships. And of course natural selection and the four ships pursuing them, but we'll get to that in a minute. The droplet now moved into the direction of the earth. The battle of the droplet, now also known as the doomsday battle, is like a red wedding in space. It's one of the craziest moments of the whole franchise. Humanity was just so arrogant at the time and they completely overestimated themselves. Keep in mind that this whole slaughter was done by just one out of their 10 droplets. Who knows what their actual warships are capable of. It's generally one of the most haunting scenes in fiction. 